This week on Maker Update, an upright laser harp, Sphero gobbles up little bits, reeling in kite string, wiggly antennas, and designing for Burning Man. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. How's everybody doing? I've been having a pretty good week with little flashes of productivity here and there. I hope you've been making some time for some projects in your life. Uh, sometimes I find that even just a little tiny project is enough to help get some momentum going. And sometimes it just takes the right inspiration. So let's take a look at the project of the week. Jonathan Bumstead has made some incredible interactive electronic instruments we featured on the show, but his latest is a real masterpiece. He calls it an upright laser harp and it is gorgeous. If you've seen a laser harp before, you've probably noticed that the lasers shoot up and down to mimic the strings of a harp. By mounting the 12 lasers horizontally, Jonathan says the instrument is easier to play. The construction is made entirely of laser cut wood panels. Each of the layers includes a laser, a mirror, a photoresistor, and adjustment bolts for aligning the laser up. All of that then gets fed into the bottom half, which has a great vintage hi-fi look with built-in speakers and these great big aluminum knobs. One knob controls the volume and the other selects which preset instrument sound that you're using. My favorite detail is that there's a little window next to this knob where a rotating wheel driven by a stepper motor displays the name of the instrument that you're playing. It's one of those details that could have easily been done with an LCD, but this is just so much cooler. Another detail I like is that unlike many of Jonathan's other instruments, the sounds and amplification are all built right into this. It's an all-in-one instrument with no outboard MIDI modules or computers you need to connect. To pull this off, he's using the Adafruit Music Maker Shield for Arduino, which includes built-in MIDI instruments, a 3-watt amp, and a headphone output. He's got all that plugged into an Arduino Mega, which manages all the incoming note messages from the lasers. It's an incredible build made with a lot of style. If you're into it, I encourage you to check out Jonathan's other work on Instructables. It's time for some news. Little Bits, the beginner focus system of Snap Together Electronic Components, has been acquired by Sphero. Both companies market themselves to the classroom STEM education audience. Sphero with their little remote controlled ball bot that kids can program with a scratch style editor. The acquisition means that Sphero now holds a combined 140 patents in the fields of robotics, electronics, software, and IoT, and will further shape the way that students learn coding and electronics. Little Bit's founder, Aya Bedir, will be moving on to other projects. Speaking of, let's quickly run through a few more projects I found this week. When he was just a kite flying kid, Matt Bilski had an idea to invent an automatic kite string reeler inner. Now as an adult, Matt's finally making good on this idea with this cool 3D printed design. Using a salvage drill motor and battery along with some clever gearing, the device automatically reels in your kite and leaves you with a perfectly spooled string. As a bonus, he built in a voltage readout, two USB plugs, and a 12 volt car outlet. On Instructables, Rick shows how he made these animated Andorian antenna for some Star Trek inspired cosplay. It's a relatively simple build with two 3D printed antennas mounted to servos, which automatically wiggle around using a small Adafruit itsy bitsy board to drive them. And if you liked last week's Harry Potter quiz game build, here's a less magical but more practical buzzer arrangement made by Flute Systems. Each buzzer has an NRF24 module inside that signals the base unit with a unique ID. On the base, you can see the order each contestant buzzed in. Time for some tips and tools. On the Core 77 blog, I got a kick out of listening to their podcast interview with Fold House co-founders, Jesse Silver and Jorg Student, talking about their process designing and building massive interactive Burning Man sculptures. From both an engineering and a teamwork perspective, it's really impressive what they pull off. Another podcast worth checking out is the latest Cool Tools podcast with my friend and freelance engineer, Jordan Bunker. I've had a lot of his tool recommendations on this show and in his podcast here, he's got four more for you. On the I Like to Make Stuff channel, Josh goes over the basics of understanding the types of bits used on a CNC router. Connor Nishijima has a new design and kit available for his Lixie brand of Nixie tube style LED digits. The new version allows you to remove and clean each pane of acrylic and includes an 11th pane that you can customize with your own design. Thomas Brooks has one of the first guides I've seen on making multicolor 3D printed lithophane designs. He's using a palette 2 filament system to pull this off, but it's an interesting idea to play around with. 
from what I can tell, it's really just the first layer that needs the color swapping. From there on up, it's all white. So maybe there are a few tricks you can try with manual filament swapping. Finally, in the latest issue of Gareth Branwyn's Tips, Tools, and Shop Tales newsletter, he has some tips on cutting leather, managing cables with zip ties, and some great advice on getting perspective on your projects and escaping the trap of trying to make things perfect. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out their latest Tech Basics video on getting started with addressable LEDs. Animated LED sequences are easier than you think. The video demonstrates how a single data pin from an Arduino is able to create some impressive LED sequences with code that you can copy and paste. All right, that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. I'd love to hear about any Halloween projects that you're planning, because I'm always looking for ideas. You can get on the Maker Update email list to have show notes emailed out to you automatically every week, so you never miss a show. Uh, a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for making this show possible. I'll be over on the Adafruit channel next week, though, for the monthly Adafruit edition of Maker Update, so you can catch me there, or you can wait for me back here, whatever you want to do. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.